watching Edupedia World videos. This is the part B of transaction management. In this part we will understand about the serializability technique which ensures that the schedule for executing concurrent transaction shall be equivalent to one of that executes the transaction serially in the same order. Now it assumes that all accesses to the database are done using write and read operations. There are two types of serializability that we have. First is the schedule and second is the serial schedule. Schedule a chronological execution sequence of a transaction is called a schedule. A schedule can have many transactions in it, each comprising of a number of instruction tasks and other things. Serial schedule. It is schedule in which transactions are aligned in such a way that one transaction executed first. When the first transaction completes its cycle, then the next transaction is executed. The transactions are ordered one after another. This type of schedule is called a serial schedule as the transactions are ordered or executed in a serialized manner. The serializability identifies the data transaction as occurring serially, independent of one another, even though they may have occurred concurrently. A schedule or list of transactions is deemed to be correct if they are serialized, otherwise they may contain errors that can lead to duplication or overlap ultimately the inconsistency of the database. In a multi-transaction environment, serial schedules are often considered as the best solution. The execution sequence of a command in a transaction cannot be changed, but the two transactions can have their commands executed in a random fashion. So this execution does not have any ill effect if the two transactions are mutually independent and working on different segments or the different data items. But if anyhow they are applied to the same data set, then the results may vary and inconsistency can be seen. Next is the equivalence schedule. There are three types of equivalence schedule. First is result equivalence, view equivalence and conflict equivalence. If two schedules produce the same result after execution, they are said to be result equivalent. They may yield the same result for some value and different result for another set of values. That's why this equivalence is not generally considered to be one of the best solution. Then is view equivalence. Two schedules would be view equivalence if the transaction in both the schedules perform similar actions in a similar manner. Then conflict equivalence. Assuming that the two schedules would be conflicting if they have the following properties, both belong to same transaction, both access the same data item and at least one of them is write operation. If the two schedules have multiple transactions with conflicting operations, they are said to be conflict equivalent if and only if these conditions are met. Both schedules contain the same set of transactions. The order of the conflicting prayer of the operation is maintained in both the schedules. The next slide is about the conflict serializability. Instructions JI and JJ of the transaction TI and TJ respectively will conflict if there exists some item P that is accessed by both JI and JJ at least one of this instruction has a command that writes some P. To understand these things let us understand the schedule S. In the schedule S first line is where JI reads on the data item P and JJ also reads on the data item P. In this case there is no conflict whereas in all the other three lines that are in red have conflict because when JI is reading at the same time JJ is writing and there are high chances of data inconsistency. When JI is writing, the JJ is reading the data item P and there is a high chance of data inconsistency. And when both are writing, the system may even crash. So out of these four, only the first that is in green has no conflict and rest three are in conflict with each other. If the previous schedule S can be changed to a schedule S dash by a series of rearrangement of non-conflicting instructions, we can conclude that S and S dash are conflict equivalent. We say that a schedule S is conflict serializable if it is 
conflict equivalent to another schedule. Next slide is about view serializability. If the schedule 1 and the schedule 2 have the same set of transactions, then schedule 1 and the schedule 2 are view equivalent if the following three conditions are met. If the transaction reads the initial data in the schedule 1, then it also has to read the initial data in schedule 2. If the transaction T reads the value written by J in schedule 1, then it also reads the value written by J in the schedule 2. If the transaction performs the final write on the data value in schedule 1, then it also performs the final write on the data value in schedule 2. And hence, the data concurrency is maintained. Understand about the transaction state. Our transaction begins and is in active state. The initial state where the transaction has just started the execution. Then it's the partially committed. At any given point of time, if the transaction is executing properly, then it is going toward it commits point. The values generated during the execution are stored in a volatile storage. It can be failed also. If the transaction fails for some reason, the temporary values are no longer required and the transaction is set to roll back. It means that any change made to the database by this transaction up to the point of failure must be undone. About it, when the rollback operation is over, the transaction reaches the before image state. The transaction is now said to have been aborted. Committed. If the failure has not occurred and everything goes well, then the transaction reaches the commit point. All the temporary values are returned to a stable storage and the transaction has been successfully executed. Then is the termination state or the terminated. Either the committed or the aborted, the transaction finally reaches this termination state or the end state. In our next tutorial, we will understand about the concurrency control and then we will see about the components and the architecture of a DBMS. Thank you.